Hello, my dear students. So today, I'm going to discuss to you some of the questions I posted in our forum about BWOLF. Okay, now let's start. First, what is BWOLF? BWOLF is a heroic poem and it's considered to be the highest achievement of the old English literature. It deals with events of the early 6th century CE and it is believed to have been composed between 700 and 750. Now, although originally entitled, it was later named after the, the Scandinavian hero, Beowulf, whose exploits and character provide its connecting theme. Now, you are maybe wondering where does Beowulf take place? Okay, Beowulf takes place in early sixth century Scandinavia, primarily in what we call as of now as Denmark and Sweden. Who was Beowulf written by or who wrote Beowulf? Well, the author of Beowulf is unknown. It is possible that the poem was composed and uh, transmitted between several different poets before it was preserved in a single manuscript that dates to about 1000. Okay, based on the story of Beowulf in this poem, what does Beowulf present to Ruthor? Okay, now class, upon his return to Europe, Beowulf presents to King Hrutgar Grendel's decapitated head and the jeweled hilt of the sword that he used to kill Grendel's mom. Okay, so that's, that's actually showing in the picture. Okay. Now, was Beowulf real? Is Beowulf really real? Okay, well, there is no evidence of historical Beowulf, but other characters, sites, and events in the poem can be historically verified. Let's say the poem Danish King Radgar and his nephew Rudolf they're generally believed to have been based on historical figures. Okay, now let me discuss to you the plot of Beowulf. Now, class, Beowulf falls into two parts, okay? It opens in Denmark. It is where the King Ragnar has splendid mead or a splendid mead hall known as the Hero. It's a place of a celebration and much merriment, you know, a place where they can, you know, be happy, get together like that. However, the joyous noise angers Grindel. Now, Grindel is an evil monster living near the swamp. So for 12 years, the creature terrorizes Yuru with nightly visits in which he carries off Ruthgar's warriors and devours them. Now, after learning of the Danish trouble, young Beowulf, a prince of the Gits in what is now, what we call now as the Southern Sweden, arrives with a small band of retainers and offers to rid Yurut of its monster. Now, Ruthgar is astonished at the little known hero's daring, but welcomes him. So after an evening of feasting, much courtesy and some discourtesy, at one point, one of Ruthgar's men insults Beowulf. So the king retires, leaving Beowulf in charge. Okay, during the night, Green Bell comes from the moors, rips open the heavy doors, and devours one of the sleeping kids. He then grapples with Beowulf, 
who refuses to use a weapon. The wolf grips one of the Grindel's hands with such force that the monster finally wrenches himself free only when his arm is torn off at the shoulder. Mortally wounded, Grindel returns to his swamp and dies. Beowulf then displays the monster's arm in Europe for all to see. The next day is such a rejoicing for Europe, and a feast is thrown in Beowulf's honor. However, as the warriors sleep that night, Grindel's mother, another swamp monster, comes to avenge her son's death, and she kills one of the Rathgar's men. So in the morning, Beowulf dives into her to search for her, and she attacks him. They struggle in her dry cave at the mirror's bottom, and Beowulf finally kills her with a sword. In the cave, Beowulf discovers Grindel's core, <clears throat> whose head he cuts off <clears throat> and then takes back to Europe. So this is what I was asking earlier. The Danes rejoice once more, and Rutgar makes a farewell speech about the character of a true hero, and Beowulf, enriched with honors and princely gifts, returns home to King Hydelac of the Gids. Now, that was the end of the first part. Now, the second part pauses rapidly over Hydelac's subsequent death in a bottle. And this is based on history, you know. The death of his son and Beowulf's succession to the kingship in his peaceful rule of 15 years. However, the tranquility ends when a fire-breathing dragon becomes enraged after a man steals from its treasure-filled lair. The creature begins ravaging the land, and the brave but aging Beowulf decides to engage it. Despite knowing that he will likely die, the fight is long and terrible a painful contrast to the battles of his youth. Painful too is the desertion of all his retainers except for his young kinsman, kinsman Wiglaf, who comes to his aid. Who comes to his aid rather. So they ultimately kill the venomous dragon but Beowulf is mortally wounded from a bite in the neck. So what happened next? Of course, he died. But before he dies, he names Wiglaf his successor. Beowulf is cremated on a funeral pyre, and his remains are buried in a barrow. Barrow, well, you know, seem like a cemetery, something like that, built by the sea. Okay, as his people mourn his death, they also express the fear that, you know, without Beowulf, Gitland will be invaded by nearby tribes. Okay, now let's have an analysis of Beowulf. What's your analysis of this poem, this heroic poem? Now, Beowulf belongs metrically, stylistically, and thematically to a heroic tradition grounded in Germanic religion and mythology. It is also part of the broader tradition of heroic poetry. Many incidents, such as the tearing off of the monster arm and the hero's descent into the mirror, are familiar motifs of folklore. Okay, take note of that. The ethical values are manifest manifestly the Germanic code of loyalty to chief and tribe and vengeance to enemies. Yet the poem is so infused with a Christian spirit that it lacks the grim fatality of many of the area lays or the sagas or the Icelandic uh, literature. So Beowulf himself seems more altruistic than other Germanic heroes 
or ancient Greek heroes of the Iliad. Now, it is significant that his three battles, it is significant that his three battles are not against men, which would entail the retaliation of the blood feared, but against evil monsters, enemies of the whole community, and of civilization itself. Many critics have seen the poem as a Christian allegory or allegory in which Beowulf, the champion of goodness and light, fights the forces of evil and darkness. His sacrificial death is seen not as tragic, but as befitting the end of a good, some would say too good, hero's life. Now, that is not to say that Beowulf is an optimistic poem. English writer and old English scholar J.R.R. Tolkien suggested that it's a total effect that is more like um, a long lyrical elegy than an epic. So even the earlier, happier section in Denmark is filled with ominous references that would have been well understood by contemporary audiences. So after Grindel, after Grindel's death, King Rutger speaks sanguinely of the future, which the audience would know will end with the destruction of his line and the, and the burning of Europe. In the second part, you know, the movement is slow and, you know, funereal. You know, scenes from Beowulf's youth are replayed in a minor key as a counterpoint to his battle, and the mood becomes increasingly like somewhere as the weird that comes from all men closes on to him. Now, there are also editions and adaptations of Beowulf. You know, Beowulf was translated into numerous languages. Modern English, um, rendering by the Simo that was here in 1999, and Tolkien, which was completed in 1926 and published in 2014, which became the bestseller. Oh, by the way, it was also the source for retellings in various books. Yeah. Okay. Now, John Gardner's Grindel, that was in 1971, took the point of view of that monster, you know, while Maria Gavama, Hedius, the mere wife, in 2018 was set in contemporary American suburbaria and offered a more sympathetic portrayal of the Grendel's mom, who was presented as an army veteran suffering from PTSD. In 2020, Hedley also published a feminist translation of Beowulf, and her version featured modern language, including slang and profanities. Beowulf's enduring appeal was also evident in its numerous film, television, theatrical adaptations. Um, for example, the, the movie by Robert Samaritan in 2007, it's a blend of animation and live action. It was co-written by Neil Gaiman and it was featured. It featured a cast that included Anthony Hopkins and Angelina Jolie. Now the poem also inspired the film Be Wolf and Grindel that was in 2005. And the TV, uh, I don't know if you're familiar, but the TV movie Grindel in 2007. Now, class notable stage productions include opera, you know, the Green Bell 2006. It was directed by Julie Taymor, who also co-wrote the libretto. And aside from that, various video games and comic books were inspired by Beowulf. 